Hi, so today I wore my By What Authority t-shirt because we're going to be talking about the most requested topic that I have gotten, which is bisexuality and religion. Dun dun dun. Um, and more specifically, is bisexuality in conflict with religion? And before we start all this, it's really important to get on the same page. So a lot of people think of religion as just different things. Um, there are three things that people are usually are referring to. There's first the belief system, which is, you know, belief in God, belief in uh, karma, belief in nirvana, belief in all that stuff. It's just like the belief system of a higher power. Um, and then there is the religion part, the, the ritualistic aspect. So it's the rituals which you engage with in order to reaffirm your beliefs. And then thirdly, it's the church. It's the physical building. It's the people within the physical building. Um, it's the church itself. Okay. So those are the three things. Now, is bisexuality in conflict with the belief systems? Well, no. I mean, you could believe in karma and still be bisexual. You could believe in um, there being a God and still be bisexual and Allah and all that. You could completely believe in all that stuff and, and still believe in or and still be bisexual. There is no conflict at all, right? So now let's talk about the challenging one. Let's talk about the, re the religious aspects, the religions themselves. Is bisexuality in conflict with religion? And if you ask that, I ask, which religion? And more specific than that, I ask, which denomination of each religion? Because let's really, let's think about this. And I'm going to use as an example Christianity because that's the religion I grew up with. But the same is true for all religions. Every single one has gone through exactly what I'm about to describe. So, uh, you know, for Christianity, there was the old Jewish text, the Old Testament. And then there was a guy born named Jesus. You know, so the story says. Um, he lived, and then he died. Decades went by, and then... A holy book was written about him called the Gospel of Mark. Um, and then a whole bunch of other Gospels were written. And then decades later, there was a Gospel written called the Gospel of Matthew. And then decades, and then Luke, then decades, then John, then decades, then Acts, right? And all this time, all these different Gospels have been written. And with each of those Gospels, which each, which each of these groups, there were different interpretations of the teachings of the original religious figure because that's the important thing it's it's not about the paper it's not about you know the words themselves all these things are a tool for us to help help us understand the teachings of the holy figure and what the holy figure meant they're just tools these pieces of paper but 340 years after the death of christ Someone went and said, you know what? There is chaos out there, I tell you. It's rain, cats and dogs. And it's all because of all these different gospels and everyone doing all these different practices underneath the Catholic Church because that was the first church. So this guy says, you know what? I'm going to do some serious editing. I'm going to cherry pick all the gospels that I like and I'm going to compile them together in a book. It's going to be a bestseller. I'm going to call it the Bible. And he did. And it was. And that seemed to satisfy a lot of people for a long time. A lot of people kind of left their particular belief systems and their particular gospels and let, you know, the, the gospel of Mary slide and, and all that stuff. And they all started just focusing on the interpretation of this one individual book called the Bible. And that became the Bible, as it were. Um, and that seemed to work. But even in that, there were people who interpreted this same text differently. Because people are individuals, they're going to see different things in the text. And again, it's not about the words themselves. It's about trying to parse out of these words what the original holy figure meant. And this carried on for like, what, 1,200 years until finally Martin Luther came about and said, you guys are so lax. You guys are doing this all wrong. You got to be much more strict about that. So he started this whole movement and started interpreting the Bible in a much more strict way. And then after that it was the Mennonites, and then after that it was the Anglicans, and, and they all looked at the same text and interpreted it all the same and all in different ways. So yes, you say which particular, like is it in conflict with religion, which particular religion, which particular denomination, and which particular church within the denomination, because each preacher in each church looks at the text, even though they're in the same denomination, and they interpret it 
slightly differently. That's how you can find the various, you know, negative things going on, even though, you know, the religion is supposed to be this whole positive thing. That's the way you can find priests that justify the raping of children by using the Bible. And they exist, sadly, they exist. And in the Catholic Church, you can even find priests that justify helping those priests rape children, putting them in situations where they can continue to rape children. And they believe that it is their moral obligation, according to the Bible, in order to help them do that. It's not what they say, but that is what they're doing. And then there are, you know, a third set of priests who are like, hells no, this is not going to be happening in my church. And they do everything they possibly can to prevent it from happening. But these are all three various examples from the first Christian faith, Catholics, of different interpretations of the exact same text. One you could say is evil, the other one you can say is good, but sadly they're all legitimate because no one knows for absolute certain, although they think they do, no one knows for certain what the teachings of Jesus actually was because he's been dead for a thousand years. So yeah, um, if you happen to, you know, want to go to a church, you could very easily find a church that kind of suits your particular morals. Um, you can find an evil one. If you're a white supremacist, you can find a church that supports white supremacy. If you're a bisexual, you can find a church that supports um, sexual orientations of all types and thinks that everyone is a child of God. There is no conflict between bisexuality and religion. There are There is some uh, conflict between bisexuality and certain churches but not churches in general. So if you're looking for an organization, simply choose the one that best fits your morals. Easy. And that is easy-ish, but unfortunately that's not the way most of us come to our religion. Most of us are born into our particular churches. Why? Because of religious inspiration? No, mostly because of geography. Mostly because, you know, your parents moved to a particular neighborhood and that was the closest church. Or maybe your grandparents like joined a particular church, so that meant your parents joined that church, which means that now you have to join that church. Um, so really, it's not a matter of any sort of, uh, it's more like luck of the draw, you end up in the church you have. And so if you're growing up and suddenly you realize you're bisexual, and you look up on the stage and you realize, oh my God, the priest is a bigot, crap. Th then you're kind of in a dilemma. And if you've been in this church for a while, if your family's in this church, you kind of think of them as an extended family. And you don't want your mother, father, brother, sister rejecting you because of your bisexuality. So you don't want this extended family rejecting you for it either. So if they do, it sucks. And you kind of have to make a decision. Am I going to do what I'm going to do with my family? Would like sit there, tell them about myself and, and convince them that bisexuality isn't wrong and go through this entire process? Or am I just going to withdraw myself and, and not have to fight to be able to be who I am within the religious organization I belong to. Those are the choices you have. They're hard, but it's up to you to decide how you want to handle it. But big question is, is bisexuality in conflict with religion in any certain way? No, it isn't. And when you see a preacher or a religious figure saying, you know, you're bisexual, you're gonna to go to hell or any of these horrible, crazy things that some of them say, you can say, by what authority do you say that? Because Everyone has their own interpretations. I could point to someone else who says that's not going to happen. There is, there is, is always just an interpretation and is no more legitimate than anyone else's, even though we've been trained to believe that the one that's standing in front of our uh, congregation is the one that's best. That ain't the way it works. That's just the way they make you believe. So there you have it. Um, I hope it was helpful. Uh, and I hope it's good news. And, and please, you know, don't feel like um, that somehow you can't be, let's say, bisexual and religious or can't be bisexual and believe in God or you can't be smart and be religious. You can't be intelligent or religious. You can't be a scientist and religious because seriously, there is no conflict there. You might say, oh, no, 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 you know, science, conflict with religion. No, it isn't because... <laughs> You can always ask the question, how did all this come into being? And if you say the Big Bang, then what put the Big Bang into being? There's, there's always a way of, of finding religion within anything. And it does not make you, you know, less smart or less cool or anything else to be a part of religion. Because honestly, there are certain churches out there that are just really, really wonderful. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm not talking about particular religions. I'm talking about groups of people that get together and do things that are moral, 
things like charity work, things like pushing, uh, progressing education, progressing social issues. There's some really, really great places out there. And, and don't be afraid to explore these things if that's a part of what you want. And, and studies have shown that people who are part of groups like churches live longer because of the, the social support that you get from them. So there you go. Bisexuality, not in conflict with religion, no matter what anyone tells you. And if they tell you otherwise, ask them, by what authority are you speaking? So that's it. Um, if you would like to support the channel, or if you like one of these fancy dancy t-shirts, um, you can check the link to uh, my Amazon store where I have all the t-shirts are all t-shirts that you can wear without having to build up your courage before you do. So they're not like flags where it's like, oh wow, he's wearing a flag. It's like, um, you know, cool things that are subtle that some people might get, some people won't, um, won't get, but you can express your bisexuality without feeling like a pressure about it. Um, so check that out. Check out my books. The links are below. Um, and also, if you like the video, please like it and share it. Um, I do many videos on bisexual topic, but I don't do them on a regular basis. So if you want to know when a new video comes out, you have to click on that little button, hit the little notification that says, let me know when a new video comes out. Until the next video, stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. <laughs> Bye.